JCB Live! This is the exciting first few days of July and this is our happy hour! So to start to talk about our wonderful guest tonight, I know you've all seen her beautiful gorgeous fashion picture. She's one of the most beautiful lady you have ever seen since mankind was created. She's the perfect blend of an Italiano um, Japanese marriage. She was born, I won't say when, because you're all gonna get jealous. She's representing youth, beauty, charm, and intelligence. She runs today her family winery, Dalla Valley Winery, and very importantly, she was raised in multiple parts of the world and really has perfected her studies as well in France, so I'm very proud of it. She worked in phenomenal properties, that you all know, like Chateau Latour, she worked at Ornelaia in Italy, and many others to come back home after so many degrees, overly qualified, of course, to be in the humble wine business that we belong to, but very, very talented, very seductive, and very charming. And Maya really represent the next generation of Napa Valley, and people in the wine world that really brings and elevate all what the grapes are doing in the soil and all what we're trying to do above. So I don't want you to wait any longer. Maya, would you give us the pleasure to come? Thank you, Jean-Charles. It's a pleasure. Thank welcome, welcome. <laughs> so John Legend joins me. It's his bubble. Wow. To say hello because he knows how charming you are. Oh, so thank you. This is an honor. And he loves your wine too. So this is a rosé we've done together in okay. France. So you know it's bad yeah. luck if you look at a Frenchman. You have to look him in the eyes. Why is that? <laughs> because if you don't, it's seven years of bad sex. <laughs> this is a good start tonight. Seven years of punishment. Who wants that? 
But let's do it again. Okay. So a little bit of friends to welcome you. Please, Merci. Maya, it's such a, a great honor. So tell me, how is it to be born Italian father, Japanese mother, raised in California? How exciting. Yes, definitely not boring. Um, well, it was very unique. I feel very lucky because I was exposed to two very different cultures and being raised as an American to kind of go into this melting pot and bring, you know, diversity and something different to Napa Valley. Um, I loved it. I, you know, I love eating noodles one day and then having pasta the next and then, you know, rice and then risotto. There's a lot of, there's a lot of complimentary parts of the food and the culture, but um, I Is there one you like the most? The pasta, hard the risotto. <laughs> it's really hard to say. It depends on the mood, how how I feel. So, and you were born in 1986. I'm making everyone jealous, <laughs> me included. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> and that was the beginning of this amazing, iconic wine. Yeah. So, how does it feel to have your wonderful name on the label? Um, well, I really don't know life any other way because I was born and then my parents were nice enough to name not only just a vineyard after me, but then also a wine, which was the top wine and not our, you know, third tier wine. So I felt very honored. Um, as soon as I could read, I, when I saw all the boxes of Maya in the cellar, you know, I was like, mommy, daddy, this is all my wine. You can't sell it. And they made it very clear from that point on that, you know, we love you and we named this wine after you because we, you're so special to us, but this is not your wine. So there's a very clear separation um, between the wine and myself. But now, you know, being part of the winery and taking it over slowly and working with my mom, I feel a big sense of responsibility to, to A, not mess it up, but B, continue this legacy that my parents started together. Did, did you actually have milk in that bottle of wine when it was empty? <laughs> no, no, we weren't that extravagant. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think it's a perfect time to talk a little bit about this amazing wine that you make. Because Maya, tell us about your training as well. And I need to tell you, when I mentioned those great chateaux, Maya studied wine and studied winemaking. I did. So I did a master's degree at Cornell University for enology and viticulture. Congratulations. Thank you. And that was because I didn't discover that I wanted to actually be in the wine business until I finished my undergraduate. So when I came back to Napa Valley, I worked a couple of harvests at a local winery called Nyers Vineyards. And uh, I fell in love with winemaking. So I told my mom, I really want to become the winemaker at Dalla Valley. And she said, that's nice. And you know, not even our intern can work here without an enology degree. So that was kind of what sparked me to carry on this journey. And so I started with my first master's in viticulture and enology at Cornell. And then I went to work harvest at Ornelia mm -hmm. in Tuscany. And then I followed by a harvest in Argentina at Bodega Rolong with Michel Rolong. And uh, afterwards I was planning on moving back to Napa. And we had a friend that said, you should really work in Bordeaux. And I said, uh, I don't know, my French people, uh, <laughs> I'm the not French sure. French people. <laughs> um, well, so. let's, let's have a toast to the French with okay. your wines. Okay. Because I understand you like the French emotionally well. <laughs> Dear friends, Maya has a French boyfriend. Is it still the case? No. <laughs> Everybody has a chance. Look at Dylan. He's smiling all the way up to his ear. Is there someone special that we should know about? Yes, now I have an American boyfriend. You see, the line is long, dear friends. <laughs> if you want a chance, give me a call. I can arrange a meeting at least. <laughs> yeah, I can't guarantee anything will happen. <laughs> so the, the French experience was, uh, was, ooh, this is enormous on the nose. So yeah. exciting. Yeah, 14 Maybe you is want to describe very... that in a few words. Sure, so this is our 2014 Cabernet Sauvignon. Um, 14 is another drought year, as you know, and uh, it was a very pretty even in terms of temperature and growing season. But the wines that we had 
are I would say a little bit more on the elegant side and more fresh versus other vintages with, which are more concentrated and uh, austere. So I love to show the 14 vintage because yes. it's very lively and has a lot of fruit, but it's very balanced and very delicate. So I mm. really enjoy this wine. A wine made by two ladies because it's your mother and yourself. It is, and we, yeah, we also work with Andy Erickson as well. That's the outside consultant, but <laughs> you know when you work with ladies, you could be a consultant, you give them an advice, but they do always what they want. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> My we, mom especially, she's a driving force. Well, how does it feel, in fact, to be a, a charming lady mm -hmm. for you as a young lady? And maybe you could speak on the behalf of Naoko, who is watching with us today, <laughs> about being a lady or woman in the wine world. Um, I think it can be very empowering. I mean, you're married to a very powerful woman in the wine industry, Gina Gallo, and so you can attest to, you know, how, I mean, for us, we never think of ourselves as because we're women in the wine industry. We're people in the wine industry and we're women in the wine industry, but I mean, it's empowering to be mother and daughter. I think it brings us closer. We share the same passion and I think it's very, it's a very unique kind of relationship to have. So, is there an advice you would want to give to all the women in the wine world as far as how to assert themselves, how to really fulfill their dreams, how to reach their goals? Yeah, I think really don't ever discount yourself because you, you think you can't do it because you're a woman. I think if you put yourself in the same sphere on a level playing ground and say, I can do this and never doubt yourself and just go for it, I think that will bring you a lot of rewards and women can do it women can 100 percent do it we have a uh, woman in our cellar too it's jesse he's our cellar master she's french and then myself we work day to day together so you know we're a very much female driven team and we work you know just as well as a cellar that's full of men so that's very proud of that the, very much so yeah. well as you know i was surrounded uh, by my grandmother's right. mother, who is an amazing, as your mother, driving force and knows what she tastes and what. Do you actually feel women have an additional sense than men? Oh, definitely. I think, yeah, we have this, you know, extra, a little bit of refinement and feminine touch in winemaking. I think we really look into every detail and nuance of a wine and take it just one step further because we're just driven and passionate. So you're saying women are more detailed as well? I would say so, yes. I see. Yes. So, dear men, we have a lot to learn. <laughs> so, maybe three words on this wine before we try a Raymond, because you're talking about lady making wine. Mm -hmm. We purposely selected tonight a winery you know well. Yes. You come and see us often, Raymond Vineyards. Mm -hmm. Made by two ladies as well, Stephanie Putnam right. and great. Kathy George, and Avenue manager like you, you know, a woman, mm -hmm. Sophie Drucker. So maybe if I could get a spatoon, yeah, we were just so we could maybe describe your wine in, in three words. So there's just three direct words. Okay, so for the Cabernet, I would say it's ethereal, it's balanced and it's magical. Woo! Those are very good <laughs> words. They are my kind of words. And as you could see, I fully agree because I've already finished my glass. Oh yeah, you're way ahead of me. <laughs> so you need to maybe swallow quickly okay. or we'll dispose so we move to the next and we'll, we'll, okay. we'll talk about the small lot from Raymond. So how would you compare you. Yes, Thank a you. French boyfriend versus an American boyfriend. Oh gosh. Let's talk men for a moment. <laughs> really? I thought we were talking about wine. <laughs> well, uh, I think a wine is a man and for you <laughs> as, as a wine is a woman for me. <laughs> um, well, French versus an American boyfriend. I think American men are better at communicating. I think that they have more of a passion, and I think that they have a great sense of respect for women. 
Love that says a lot about Frenchmen. <laughs> Ooh la la, I'm shivering and sweating on this very hot day here in the heart of Napa Valley. But there's exception, of course. Of course, Good. of course. There's always an exception to the rule. So. I feel I could be part of that. <laughs> so now we brought a, a wine for your attention that I'd love for you to give me a few words on. Okay. This is a traditional Bordeaux style, mm -hmm. which we love to call Maya Napa style because there's no reason to always look at Bordeaux as the example. Napa can be as a shining star as Bordeaux. Right. So we called it the Napa blend. So this is the five key grape mm -hmm. varieties that you know. Cabernet Sauvignon, Cabernet mm -hmm. Franc, Merlot Malbec and Petit Verdot. Okay, so it has it all. It has it all. I like the discipline of Maya, you see. Very thoughtful, did you see? She looked at the glass, mm -hmm. she sensed it, she tasted it, and she waited for that ritual faction. I like that. Yeah, you have to have the whole experience, right? You have to look look at the wine, taste it, smell it, the whole experience. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I, I, this is a great blend, Meritage blend. 2016 2016 vintage. you know we want it to be close 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 in yeah. age but yeah this definitely is a wine that has more grip to it a beautiful elegant length um but yeah, definitely you feel the power of 16 yeah i would say great vintage dear mm -hmm. friends so maya what makes you who you are today because i've known you for many years fortunately true. and i've seen your phenomenal growth as a person mm -hmm personally, professionally, and see you, you know, dazzle in the world of wine, what do you account it? Um, all that I way? mean, I have to give a lot of credit to the woman who raised me, my mother. I think she was very smart and supportive from the beginning by saying, it's okay, you have one life, if you don't want to go in the wine business, you know, you should do what you love and it's a little bit like reverse psychology because I'm only child so then you start to think you know the wheels start turning in your head and then I realized you know I if I don't take over the property then we would just sell it and that would be the end of the legacy so um, she really was like a quiet driving force to help me be, really become who I am and I, I'm really grateful for that and Oh, you know, just traveling. I encourage every young person to go out and travel and see the world and, um, you know, push the limits of what you feel comfortable doing because uh, it's amazing how far you can go if you just test those limits constantly. So that's what I find really has helped form who I am. It's kind of constantly challenging myself. That's a great advice. Yeah. Was there a moment in your life where you said, oh, maybe I'm not going to pursue that white world. Maybe I'm going to do this. And that moment that really said, that's it, I'm going for it. Oh yeah, I, well, growing up I had no interest in being in the, in the wine world. I think when you're surrounded by too much of a good thing, it's, uh, it's too obvious, right? So well, yeah. you have to leave and go do something else. And then that kind of clicked for me at that point when I left, and when I was living in Seattle during university. And then you said you were remote. You said, that's really what I want. Yeah. What's yeah. your first wine you've had that made you love wine? Do you remember what it was? Was it I mean, Maya? the day I came home from the hospital, my parents put a drop of Dom Perignon champagne in my mouth. So oh, it, was, it start. started from day one, I think, the love of wine. So. And when you don't drink wine, what do you drink? With alcohol, I mean. Oh, Any? with alcohol? I mean, I would say most of what I have is drink is wine. Occasionally I'll have a cocktail and... Occasionally I'll have an ice cold beer, you know, they, we always say it takes a lot of beer to make a fine wine. So yeah. during harvest, it's nice to have a nice, super cold beer. But uh, yeah, mostly it's very wine focused for me. Mm -hmm. Now, what, you know, in all the things you do inspires you the most as an individual? And it doesn't have to be wine, of course, it right. can be anything. What, what drives you, inspires you? I feel like, you know, lately these days I'm returning more to the past and seeing what others have done in this industry to pave the way to where we are now. Yes. And then looking back towards what they've done, you know, 
there's so many legends in this valley. You can think about Robert Mondavi, there's, you know, all the top female winemaker like Gina and like, Kathy Corison or like women and wineries like Spotswood. Um, I find actually a lot of inspiration looking towards the past, which is a bit unusual, but I find that now, you know, Napa Valley is becoming of a certain age where you want to start preserving and thinking about how you're going to preserve the his historical side of that and tradition, which probably comes from my old world training, but uh, I think it's important not to ignore what others have done to get where we are today. So I find a lot of inspiration in that. Well, which is great, brings your Italian history and your Japanese history. Yes, yes. You know? So when you look at um, Italy and Japan, is there one of the two that attracts you the most and inspires you the most? You know, I think there's different elements from each culture that inspire me. I love the precision and focus um, in Japanese culture and, you know, the dedication to a craft where mm -hmm. people spend lifetimes a lifetime trying to perfect just one craft. Um, and in, in Italy, of course, I love the passion of people. The people, you know, love to live, they love to eat well, and they love to drink well. So that, and both those sides very much inspire me. I'm a big fan, as you know, of you. the Japanese culture. I know, I know. I'm enormously in love mm -hmm. with Maya's mother, who I adore, Naoko. And big kiss, Naoko. <laughs> And the Japanese culture, and I find it very resourcing to go to Japan and, and extremely healing to think of nature and the environment. Is there something you follow specifically environmentally in your practices that really makes that history of Japan, you know, the Kyoto Accord that some political may have challenged, but that I'm a firm believer on, you know, we yeah, farm as we are. Yeah. all those organically, biodynamically, we manage resources. Mm -hmm. So you do the same, right? We do the same. We've been farming organically since 2007, and then uh, now we're in the second year of farming biodynamically. Wow, and good. So, yeah, it's been a beautiful journey. We work with uh, Jeff Dawson, who is a great consultant and has helped us in this journey of understanding uh, the 500, 501, the barrel all composting. Also thinking, you know, beyond just what you learn in school and what's in a textbook of thinking about energies of a vineyard right. and of a place and just really thinking of the whole property you know as a system as force of life so i really enjoyed learning that aspect of, of biodynamics and is it something you feel your generation we sadly 15 years aside apart <laughs> I, it hurts me every time I say it. <laughs> um, we, do you feel that your generation is, is really into this now? The environment, I, yes. the practices? Absolutely. I think our generation, um, you know, in this age of information and access to the internet and having all this access to different information, um, people are very conscious of what they're drinking and what they're putting into their bodies and mm -hmm. health, you know, being very health conscious and also thinking about, yes, the environment. And where what what we're gonna be living in in you know 20 30 50 years so I think absolutely it should be on every person's mind and thinking about taking things one step further is you know just a small step in the in the right direction I think and I'm very excited as soon as I speak to schools or universities or you know in general younger you know mm -hmm. people in America or in Europe Obviously, in Asia, mm -hmm. uh, you know, specifically Japan, right. needless to say, they're very concerned about yeah. the environment, about waste and reduce, reuse, and recycle and mm -hmm. energy. So I'm pleased to see that. So I'm glad to hear that you're confirming it. Oh, absolutely. I mean, it's very important if you think about how farming was a hundred years ago versus now. You know, we had this period of this industrial age where it was just about growing the mass product and as fast as possible, as quickly as possible, because that was the need then. But now I think we have to look at what it's done to, to the environment and then take a step back and see how we can work to be more regenerative and replenishing and taking, putting yes. back what we basically essentially ripped out from, from a lot of the soils around the world. Yes. And I'm so glad we are in a secret place <laughs> in Napa Valley. We cannot tell you where it is. But you could see it's a different environment than the JCB Wine Bar and Lounge. 
but we surround it with nature and this is all organic and biodynamic guess where we are write it down and if you win we'll invite you as well <laughs> so Maya before we taste your grand wine okay I wanted you to taste one of the wines Stephanie crafts as well which is a Cabernet Sauvignon Napa Valley okay which is our reserve line and a wonderful blend of already of great AVA awareness some close to your vineyards mm. and maybe again three sexy words because i love ethereal uh -huh. that was <laughs> inspirational too no i think um this wine has a lot of, of brightness and beauty to it and uh, just has this beautiful length as well brightness yeah. beauty length I love it. You see, ladies always have great adjectives to bring <laughs> to. So, Maya, tall, gorgeous lady, people could be intimidated. How is it to run your own wine right now? Um, well, With your name on it, yeah, which is very exciting and we're going to taste it. How does it feel? How, you know, many ladies as my lovely wife run mm -hmm. their things and, and it's exciting to see. For me, I love and I admire ladies' leadership, which I think is different than men and, and I you know, strive by it and yeah. I'm attracted to it. So how does it feel? I mean, I can't say it feels bad. I feel it's a wonderful feeling and uh, my mom is still very much involved and it's, we work together day to day and it's, I mean, it's just so great to have these, magical piece of land and to be able to farm it exactly how you want it and really just to be as precise and focused and everything that we want to do and have we have the ability to control in the vineyard and that's where we spend a majority of our time is the crafting vineyard. the wine in the vineyard so it's you know i feel lucky that we we have our own farming team in house and we're able to you know make tiny adjustments day to day our vineyard manager edgar is lives on the property and is very much passionate equally passionate as we are i think i would safe to say i think our whole team is very passionate about what they do and they bring you know 100 percent to work every day so it's it's a great feeling, you know, to be able to come to work yes. and share that with people, I'm sure, as you feel with, you know, with your team, too. Well, it comes from your leadership as well. And yeah. I think when you farm organically or biodynamically, we've been doing it for 25 years now. If the team is not engaged and one member of the team, the energy is obviously crossed by negative energy and it doesn't work. Mm -hmm. So I think it is very important to keep it very tight, very disciplinary focus and very engaged. So. Congratulations. Thank you. So now, dear friends, I know all of you are jealous because you may not have this wine, but you will soon because Maya gave us the incredible privilege to be able to sell it at the Oakville Wine Merchant. So there is a little bit of wine, not too much, and she's going to tell us all about it. The wine started in 1986, right? 88. 88. <laughs> Close. Close enough. Yeah. See, okay. they made you two years younger. You may <laughs> like that one. Yeah. yeah. You know, I just turned 40, so that's why I say that. Yeah, exactly. Depth, intensity, richness, terroir. Mm -hmm. right? Yes. So we are in Oakville. We are in Oakville. So all of our wines come from our vineyard, our 20-acre vineyard on our property. And the Maya is our best block of Cabernet Sauvignon named Maya and always blended with a high percentage of Cab Franc. So this makes this very unique, beautiful blend. By itself, the Cabernet is very powerful, austere, very yeah. stern um, wine. And then with this high percentage of Cab Franc, you have this lift to it and this florality and you have this, you know, a lot of violet and cassis and it's, I think it makes it a very, very much a complex and elegant wine to what would could otherwise be austere and very very tight that's right and that's the beauty of the feminine touch dear mm -hmm. friends so we'll talk more about the wine but maya your passion tell us my passion well and i know you have many passions <laughs> i will apart from wine my other passion is horses i oh. love 
riding horses. I've been competing and riding since I was six years old. And uh, that's what I do every day before I go to work. I go to the barn and I ride my horse and it's my moment of Zen focus and my way to prepare for the day. And that's then, wonderful. Are the yeah. horses on the estate? They are not. I have tried for many years to have a horse on the estate and my mom has pushed back very much so. Um, so I keep my horse in Carneros. Oh, nice. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. You could probably gallop and do yeah, a lot more activities. Exactly. Than the a lot of space. Yeah. A lot more so this space. is why we can account those beautiful long legs and the fur. <laughs> yes. You it is, a, it is a workout. <laughs> well, that's a huge workout. Yeah. So you, you jump, you, you I do, do dressage. dressage. Yes. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. Well, we should go riding someday. Yeah, it would be a blast. It's so much fun. You know, we're very fortunate for many of you who are on the East Coast and and in the Midwest and who probably not have the greenery that we have around us, it's easy to have horses here and it's mm -hmm. uh, an amazing landscape. So if you want to ride horses, let us know. There's a few great places actually you can come and ride. Mm -hmm. There are. There's a, yeah, there's a couple of places you can you know rent horses and go for a ride. There's a great place in Sonoma, I think just over the hill and it's beautiful scenery to take a long trail ride and so we could see you in national competition <laughs> yeah i'm actually i'm going to compete next weekend so. wow mm -hmm. so for the nation titles or not state? right now i have a young horse so i keep him at the, he's at the lower levels right now so great. just a state state level well that's great yeah any national in national titles you want to share Oh, well, I, yeah, I was on the U.S. developing team many years ago and I did the, there's a young adult Grand Prix championship where I placed in the top 10. And that That's was, yeah, huge! With my old horse. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. I'm going to toast to that. Okay. Had, you see, we've known each other for many years. Yeah. I know you were riding, but mm -hmm. it was casual. That's the discretion of a great lady. <laughs> so now, any other passion besides horses? Um, food is definitely the other big passion, which is complementary to wine. Um, I love to cook, I love to eat and dine, and I'm very happy that we have restaurants open again in Napa yeah. Valley and should go and support them as much as we can. And what do you cook when you cook? Because I know I'll give Thank you a little. So we're serving Maya, we mm -hmm. decanted it in our passion collection which we designed and we had Baccarat make, so it's all crystal. Nothing better than pure, 100% crystal welcoming. Honestly, Beautiful. such an iconic wine. I'd like to tell all of you, because maybe Maya is not gonna say it, this wine got 100 points. So this is what we call perfect score. This is wholeness. This is the ultimate point of biodynamic and wine making, you know, this integration of what we could call a wine perfect. Well, thank you, Jean Charles. Yeah, very yeah. impressive. Thank you. And um, yeah, so any other food? So, where do you cook the most? I probably cook Italian more at home than Japanese, just for the simple fact that the Japanese food is many small dishes, so it takes a lot more effort than, you know, putting together like a pasta or, you know, the caprese salad in the summer. So, so if we had to pair. Maya, mm -hmm. we together tete a tete dinner. Okay. Nobody's around us. Okay. Which could be the case, really. <laughs> what would we want to pair? With the Maya, um, I we like to have the Maya a lot. You know, of course, meat is an obvious choice of so a nice, you know, wagyu dish, or it goes very well with the young uh, vintages of Maya go very well with a beautiful cheese plate so oh as well mm -hmm. it does which is not easy to do you know Cabernet cheese mm -hmm. you know coming from Burgundy as right. you know it's so easy because Pinot and Burgundy is really the obviously origin of so many great cheeses so it it's does. easier when it comes to the world of Cab it's not as easy to pair cheese huh it's a little bit, yeah, it's a little bit more challenging, but we li I like to pair it with like a hard cheese, like a Comté. Yeah. I think it can go quite nicely. For sure. So. 36 months of mm -hmm. age Comté. It's very good. So any Japanese dish you would recommend? Because Japanese food mm -hmm. is my favorite. Yes. It will be my ultimate moment. The last breath I have, I would want to have Japanese. What would you say with that? Because in America today, we have a lot of great Japanese restaurants. We do. A lot of amazing Japanese influence. So That's true. What would you 
If there was a dish that you think Maya would shine mm -hmm. the most, I would say uh, you know either something. I think a duck dish actually could do oh. really nice. We uh, we went to this amazing duck restaurant last time we were in Japan, and it's a very it's a very exclusive place. They only have you know wild duck that they hunt and mm. are only open a certain number of months of the year. And I think and they grill it you know all over a small wood fire. And I think this could go really well with a nice like wood fire grilled duck. That's a great mm -hmm. idea. Do you hunt? I do not hunt. What about on horses? Chassacou as we Yeah. No, no, merci. <laughs> that's a pretty elegant, you know, it you is. basically corner the... Yeah. Yeah, but I don't, yeah, I don't like shooting guns, so it's not for me. I no, like, I I'm like being you. around animals, I don't like hunting them. I'm so with you. I like eating it after, but... <laughs> we into preserving, but you're not vegetarian. I am not vegetarian. You know, we love, obviously, duck, we love all mm -hmm. kinds of meat. So, maybe a further description of Maya, if you wish, okay. that the thought you would want to leave to everybody listening as such a great charismatic, it's, it's a surreal wines in many ways that makes me think of Bordeaux, but is as good or better, of course, and I would not compare it, but the high level of Cabernet Franc makes me think, of course, of a few great chateaux sure. that I love. Right. Not always the obvious, and mm -hmm. I think you may want to describe it further and why Cabernet Franc, which is my yeah. favorite grape variety, is so important to this blend. Yeah, so we have grown Cabernet Franc on the property since the, since the original plantings. And uh, actually my mom planted, decided to plant more after she did a whole replant of our vineyard in the uh, early 2000s. And that's because I, in our site we have a, a clay loam soil and a certain exposition where Cab Franc really excels. And it was just from the first, you know, grapes that we got off the property of Cab Franc, we really loved the profile. You know, it had this magical dried herbs and spices, and it just really just brings a lift to every wine. So we actually, in all three wines that we produce, we blend with Cab Franc because we love it. But with Maya, we use the higher percentage um, because it just, like I said before, it adds this extra yes. lift and layer of depth. And with, for me, that's what I love about Maya. You, you have a smell and you taste it and it just is so intriguing. It just keeps bringing you back for more because you want to keep understanding it. You know? And that's what I did. Yes, I went for I second. Saw. <laughs> I saw. So Maya, before we go to your dreams, okay. one more question. Okay. If a man wants to seduce you, <laughs> How should he do that? He shouldn't. <laughs> That's a good answer. So what do you look for the most in a man? In a man? Um, Not in a wine, in a man. <laughs> Keeps diverting back to men, huh? Well, you know, I'm getting a lot of questions here. You know, oh, That's okay. the thing. Okay. <laughs> well, you know, you have a lot of admirers out there. <laughs> so I'm just following the principle of bring some of the questions sure, sure. highlighted. Yeah, I mean, I look for someone who's intelligent, who has depth to them, um, who's emotionally intelligent, and who can, who shares a passion in life, and you know, has has something that they want to live for, and you know, go day to day, and want to make something from themselves. So that's really for me. Well, that's good. Yeah, that's good enough. Not easy to find, but no. it seems you are on your way. Yes, I am very lucky. Wow, I hope he's watching. <laughs> So Maya, now your dream, maybe your dream that uh, besides wine, mm -hmm. but it could include wine, maybe two dreams you mm -hmm. want to, maybe the dream for, for the wonderful winery that right. you have, what would be your dream to continue to achieve and then a dream that is over the top that you wish to accomplish in Oh life. wow, this is, yeah. I think for the winery, I, I mean I already feel like I'm achieving my dreams of making it biodynamically farmed and really bringing the system in as a whole and i would love to incorporate somehow horses into yes. into the vineyard and horse plowing exactly so uh, i'm still that would be a dream of mine definitely to have to incorporate those two big passions and uh yeah i mean a global dream for me would be something that would bring me back more to being in Europe because I lived there for three years and I, I really love being there. 
And it would be a dream for me to be able to have a reason to spend more time there, but also Japan. So some way to incorporate, you know, all the the cultures that I that I belong to into one place, because obviously, as you know, they're both very far away. So it would be a dream of mine to be able to have it all come closer. Very charming <laughs> dreams. And I love the incorporation of your combined passion, which Thank is you. really great. And, you know, we do horse plowing in Burgundy. I so know. Anytime yeah. you want to come and see. Yeah, I, did, I gave it a try in, uh, in Bordeaux at uh, Chateau Latour. They do, do all the in a row work with uh, horses and plows and is really, I mean, it just like gives you an extra sense of yes. time slowing and really being present in the vineyard. And for me, that was just magical. And, and feeling mother nature. It is, yeah, at really the closest feeling level. It. Yeah, because when you're on a tractor or machine, it's not the same feeling. You're not really feeling the soil when you're walking, th you know, plowing or yes. spraying. It's it's not the same feeling as being And it's amazing because the force yes. of the animal, the animal traction, as we call it, is insanely powerful. Yes, I mean, I tried many times and I did it a lot in, you know, 1999, 2000, 2001, and, mm -hmm. and I would do a, a few acres. One, I was becoming Superman, which was a good thing because you, <laughs> you work your upper body. You do. It is a workout. But I could not often, and I was loose control of mm -hmm. the animal pulling and pulling. And those are the Percheron, those amazing, yeah, powerful. Draft horses. And they, they're so strong. They take you and you... You know, and specifically mm -hmm. in Burgundy, you know, with very tight spacing. Yeah. Wow, it was difficult. Mm -hmm. So, Maya, last word, maybe okay. for l your great inspiration. Obviously, Am I? <laughs> a young, incredible talent Thank in you. the wine world. Maybe a few words for a lot of the friends you have. Okay. And people who want to make it in the wine world and people who, who should drink more wine. Yeah. Maybe the last message is yours. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, for me, my message to everyone, you know, whether it's you're already in the business or you want to enter into the business is, you know, don't be intimidated by wine. Wine is something that's meant to be shared by everyone. It's a it's a product that brings people together and it really should is meant to be something that's inclusive and not exclusive. So I really encourage people to don't be afraid, reach out to winemakers, reach out to people in the business and I think uh, we can all do more to really make the wine industry very inclusive to all. So I would just say, be open-minded. Don't, you know, if you think Napa Valley is like a snobby, uppity place, I would, I would say the opposite. I think people here are very warm and welcoming and it's a very open industry. And I think um, you should put your perceptions aside of the place of judgments and just become more open-minded. What else to say, dear friends? <laughs> Phenomenal advice. Oh, you yeah. want to finish with bubbles, yeah, of, sure. course. of course. <laughs> we, we, I'm double fisting because I'm so excited. Dear friends, wasn't it fun to have the next generation and a wine that she's been making really since birth, which is great. <laughs> we could say that you've made it since you came on this earth. We have a great toast for Naoko. Cheers, mom. Your mother, who we adore, <laughs> and uh, we cannot wait to see you again. And we want to thank all of you for being with us tonight. This was inspirational, aspirational, and, which I love, educational. So, Maya, thank you so much. Cheers. Dear friends, to very soon, no later than Friday, amazing guest again. And send us your comments. And you know, if you want Naoko and Maya's wine, we have them at the Oakville Grocery. And, of course, the Raymond, you know where to find them. All the best. Good night. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs>